the full lineup for the WWE Hall of Fame class of 2016 has been unveiled. The final two spots on, in the class uh, were announced yesterday. And on this video, I want to take a quick look at actually who is in this class of 2016. First of all, announced yesterday, the celebrity inductees to the WWE Hall of Fame. First of all, Calvin Broadus Jr., a.k.a. Snoop Dogg. Now, there's a lot of people, obviously, they have their different opinions on the WWE Hall of Fame. Who should be inducted? Who should be already inducted? Who should be inducted next? Uh, various different opinions about the celebrity wing of the Hall of Fame. Uh, you know, about the different celebrities being inducted, whether that's a good thing, whether it's a bad thing, whether it should even take place. WWE, of course, have described themselves as a sports entertainment company, an entertainment company, and obviously they want uh, to be associated with major names in the uh, in whether it be the music world, uh, films, television, whatever it is, and obviously with the inductions of the likes of Arnold Schwarzenegger last year, we see that a lot. This year, Snoop Dogg going into the WWE Hall of Fame. I'm not really a fan of Snoop Dogg. Not really. Listen to his music. I thought he was. I thought some of his appearances have been entertaining. I actually liked his appearance on the uh, U.S. show Monk, to, uh, starring Tony Shalhoub, uh, which was actually a really good episode. Uh, again, at least WWE are making this distinction of the celebrity wing, uh, which will not really satisfy everybody. You can't satisfy everybody, but Snoop Dogg going into the WWE Hall of Fame again. It, it's another major name. You cannot dispute that Snoop Dogg is a major name uh, in the world of entertainment and it kind of cements his association with the company. He's going to be inducted, according to Wikipedia, by Sasha Banks, uh, his cousin. Uh, I'm sure that will be good. I'm, you know, it's a celebrity wing. It's not going to be uh, really that great. I kind of hope that the fans give him a decent welcome and don't boo him out the building um, but uh, I'm sure I don't know, it depends on who, what the international fans think of Snoop Dogg, it be, to be honest I think the reception will be I think the most interesting part about his induction Joan London has been announced yesterday as the recipient of the Warrior Award. Uh, I don't know much about Joan London. I've heard of her before, but she's a more American kind of presence uh, as a, a broadcaster, award-winning journalist. Uh, so I, I, she hasn't really made... She isn't really known here across, in the UK across the pond. Uh, although I won't say a bad thing about her, you know, uh, Bessel author as well, and breast cancer survivor, uh, who is raising a lot of awareness and money uh, with the Susan G. Coleman Foundation, which is, of course, a very close partner of WWE, you know, which is a great cause, obviously. Uh, so she's going to be recipient of the Warriors Award, and I think it's good that WWE are continuing this award, and I do hope uh, that they keep awarding it to genuine cases, genuine people who truly, actually deserve uh, this kind of award. Stan the Lariat Hansen is being inducted uh, oh, but, oh, by the way, Joan London is being uh, inducted, or uh, given the award by Dana Warrior. I should mention that who the inductees are. Stan the Lariat Hansen is going in uh, one time AWA world champ uh, World Heavyweight Champion, former NWA United States Champion, a real, true uh, wrestler, I think deserves to be in any w any Hall of Fame, never mind WWE, uh, one of, certainly one of the most popular gaijin or foreign wrestlers to ever compete in Japan, uh, very tough guy, he will be inducted by Vader, whose eye he nearly destroyed in a match, and I'm sure everybody's seen that on YouTube. Uh, so that should be good. Uh, and, you know, WWE these days they are really are kind of spreading out one diva, one celebrity, one posthumous. So they really are a little bit spreading out the you know the the kind of awards. But some people think it's good. Some people obviously again, everybody has their own thoughts and opinions on this. But Stan the Larry Hansen is 
uh, taking this place into the WWE Hall of Fame. Can't really argue against that. Jacqueline is going into the Hall of Fame. Jacqueline Moore. No, again, she's the one I was never really a, a huge fan of. Didn't really think much of her. She was a good wrestler. Two-time WF Women's Champion. One-time WWE Cruiserweight Champion. Never really a huge fan of hers. Saw her in WCW and, of course, WWE. I, I don't know. I, I just... Was I just never thought that much of her. I've never really had that. You know, the fans talk about the connection to a particular wrestler. Never really had that connection to her. She'll be inducted by the Dudley Boys. But Jacqueline, uh, as much as I know that probably some WWE fans really don't think that much of her. She, again, she's one just like uh, a, a few others in this year's class. Really being inducted for an entire career and entire contributions to wrestling or sports entertainment. Big Boss Man Ray Trailer is going into the WWE Hall of Fame. This is the post... Uh, well, really, this is the real posthumous inductee this year. Uh, four-time WF Hardcore Champion, one-time WF Tag Team Champion. I really enjoyed his work, actually. Uh, you know, he is mostly... He's obviously going under going in under the Big Boss Man name, again, that, they, that's what tends to happen, they go under, they go in under their most well-known WWE name, so that's kind of what happens, but I enjoyed his work, I thought, obviously, his late 1990s run in WWE wasn't as good as it could have been, uh, obviously his early 1990s run, facing like to Hulk Hogan, and all the stars that were around in those days, he had some really great matches, uh, it is sad that this, this is the posthumous inductee. I would love to have seen him there to accept it in person. He will be inducted by Slick. That was announced yesterday as well. I, I, I have to say, I, I did find it a bit annoying that uh, he goes, uh, he enters under the uh, the Jive Soul Bro theme in WWE 2K16 rather than the. Uh, Hard Time Cobb County theme that I think is most popular for the Big Boss Man. And I thought something might have been up when he was indu- when he was uh, announced as part of the roster uh, for the game, and maybe this is part of the same deal that uh, you know that he's allowed in the game and getting into the WWE Hall of Fame. But certainly a guy well deserved. Uh, you no, know, it, it's a little bit of a pity that Jim Cornette when were is not going to be there uh, to induct him as well because he was obviously great. They were obviously great friends right up until uh, Ray Trailer's passing, and uh, of course spent time in NWA, WWE as uh, Jim Cornette's uh, man, uh, well, kind of bodyguard. But uh, it's uh, great to see the Big Boss Man being remembered, and um, hopefully his family, uh, you know, can enjoy this uh, induction. The Fabulous Freebirds, again, the guys get an inductor for their entire career. I really only got to see the Fabulous Freebirds lineup of Jimmy Jam Garvin and Michael P.S. Hayes in World Championship Wrestling. That's really the the, the most that I saw them. Obviously, with the WWE Network, we can see some of their stuff on the World Class Championship Wrestling section of the network. Uh, a lot of people have been wanting the Fabulous Freebirds to be inducted for years, and one of the certainly one of the aspects of judging whether people should be inducted is seeing who they influenced, and they've influenced the likes of Stone Cold Steve Austin. If you hear uh, any episode of the Steve Austin Show podcast where the, any of the Freebirds, especially Michael Hayes, uh, is uh, mentioned, you know Steve Austin gives them a lot of credit for influencing him both professionally and personally. So, it's great to see these guys going in the Hall of Fame, and it's great that they're actually including Terry Gordy and Buddy Roberts. They couldn't really induct the Fabulous Freebirds without having um, those guys. And, and having it take place in Dallas, where they faced the Bon Erics, where they had really... Certainly, if it wasn't their most successful run... Uh, and I think it probably will would have been financially and match wise. It certainly is their most memorable run in Dallas with World Class Championship Wrestling WCCW. 
Uh, so it's great to see them. They're in, getting inducted by the New Day, which uh, I I don't quite agree with. I, I know that apparently Kevin Moneric is a, is going to be in Dallas. I would actually like I would actually like to see Kevin Moneric interrupt them and maybe the New Day make way for Kevin Moneric. Uh, I don't know whether anything like that would happen. Um, you know, maybe New Day uh, trumpet Kevin Von Eric out. You know, to to induct the uh, Fabulous Freebirds. I know Michael PSAs on Twitter have said that he doesn't. He really uh, actually doesn't have any problem with the New Day inducting the Freebirds at all. Um, and I, 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 I don't. Again, a lot of people different will have their different opinions on them. But at least it's great to see the Fabulous Freebirds. Be finally being inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. Next up, Charles Wright, the Godfather. Again, being inducted under the Godfather name is the most successful really uh, WWE name. Again, being inducted for his entire career, uh, one-time WWE Intercontinental Champion, one-time WWE Tag Team Champion, uh, a, you know, a, a really solid performer. Um, and from what I've heard from... Again, ju- you know, just like uh, the bo- uh, Big Boss Man uh, and, and the Fabulous Freebirds, whenever his name comes up on any wrestling podcast, uh, he is spoken of highly. And obviously, you're not going to be inducted in the Hall of Fame if you have a bad relationship with the company. But from all I've heard on the various podcasts, he's very much a company man, which is you know, we do what the WWE wanted him to do, which led to some of the repackaging that uh, took place over his career. Uh, from Papa Sham- from uh, I think it's the Night Stalker that he was before, uh, which ended up being uh, in WWE the Papa Shango gimmick, then to Kama Mustafa, Kama, you know, the, the Supreme Fighting Machine, then Kama Mustafa as part of the Nation of Domination, then the Godfather, then the Good Father as part of Right to Censor, and then back to being the Godfather, uh, which he has been in actually uh, at wrestling conventions or appearances. He actually still does uh, a couple of gimmicks. I noticed yes, uh, last year actually uh, that on one... Uh, convention. He appeared at least, I think it was a three-day convention, but at least he appeared on at least two of the days. And on one day he was Papa Shango, and on the next day he was the Godfather. So fans obviously had their opportunity to get the picture taken with both Papa Shango and the Godfather. Uh, so like I said, he's highly thought of. Seems very liked behind the scenes, uh, and. You no, know, I I enjoyed his work as the Godfather and Attitude Era. Uh, always, you know, he really pushed the envelope a little bit with the whole train and everything like that. But uh, again, isn't again another guy who's been rewarded for his entire career. He'll be inducted by the Acolyte Protection Agency, John Bradshaw, Layfield, and Ron Simmons, uh, aka Farouk. Uh, so that's great to see him being inducted. The headliner is, of course, the icon Sting. I'm really glad that Sting is going into the WWE Hall of Fame. Obviously, right at this time, we do not know whether Sting can or will ever compete again. Right at this time, we don't know what the state of Sting's neck injury is. He, When he was over uh, in the UK, uh, when I saw him in Glasgow in October... He said he had further evaluations to come. And just a few weeks ago, he said, I think it was on Twitter or Facebook, uh, that he was preparing for possibly having major surgery, which seemingly, according to what he said to WB.com, did not happen. So hopefully there is still a possibility we get one more match for Sting. That Because I would genuinely not like for Sting to go out that way, the way that he did on a stretcher. That's not the way that uh, he should really end his career. I, I, In my opinion, he should certainly be the headliner. I think he should be the final inductee, the main event of the Hall of Fame class of 2016. Um, six-time WCW World Champion, two-time NWA World Heavyweight Champion, uh, United States Champion, Tag Team Champion. He has really had a hugely successful career and always been one of my personal favourites. I am, I mean, to be honest, looking at the Hall of Fame class 
it's okay. I mean, it's not the greatest class, really. I mean, the Freebirds up right up there. I said the big boss man, but it's really and to be honest, uh, and no disrespect to the other inductees this year, it really is Sting's induction that I will be sitting down and watching the Hall of Fame for. It's not the greatest class, to be honest, looking at the amount, uh, all of the names that they've inducted over the past several years, obviously, I mean, we're approaching, what, uh, 1993, so this is about, what, 23 years of the WWE Hall of Fame, and over those years, they've inducted so many of the top, top names in the industry of professional wrestling, sports entertainment, it is getting a little bit thin on the ground for some of the really, really strong names that they can induct. Overall, it's a decent class. It's, it's not the best class, and I don't think this year, to be honest, WrestleMania is going to be the best WrestleMania. I don't think it's going to be one of the most memorable WrestleManias of all time. Uh, but certainly a decent class of WrestleMania, uh, for the uh, WWE Hall of Fame class of 2016. And I actually look forward to sitting down on Saturday night and hearing their inductions.